So recording this part, post edit and listen really quick. Yes, I'm running stock intake manifold. No, I'm not running coolant to my turbo. So if you see brass fittings on the turbo that don't match yours, they're probably just the coolant fittings that I thought I was going to run, but I ended up just capping them off. I am running 1000 cc DW injectors. And with that being said, I just want to apologize if I do miss detail. Recording this process was really overwhelming and honestly just time consuming. So toward the end of the video, you know, I do start to lose a little bit of traction as far as detail goes. Um, so if I missed out on anything, just comment down below. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can with the details. Um, but yeah, with that being said, hope you guys enjoy to another video gang a long awaited video and y'all see it i'm putting the kit on right now i already did all the boring stuff like taking off the factory intake air box um the plastic other pieces that go with it the battery um the plastic cover that goes above the uh intake manifold this plastic cover just basically all the boring stuff that doesn't need to be recorded wheels as well and right now i'm actually bolting up the um, intercooler but for some reason, this bracket lines up perfect. But if we come on this side and we try to mount the bracket, it just it just won't line up with those holes right there. So, and I've tried pulling uh, the intercooler out because it needs to come out anyway. But just a bunch of you know small stuff. I've tried redrilling. I gotta redrill again. But yeah, I just got to get that on and I'm going to take this really slow. Like it probably won't be running for at least two or three weeks. I got everything I need. So I got the intercooler mounted in. What I ended up doing with this bracket passenger side was I, I had it off and I put it on this vice grip right here and I just bent it to my needs. And now it works. It was this corner right here that was giving me problems. It just wasn't lining up with the, uh, the factory bash bar um, holes. So I just bent it and now it works fine. Um, it looks to me though that it's honestly a little crooked. So I'll tinker with that later. So now I'm gonna be removing this top piece right here. Super easy, three bolts right here when hiding in the back. Same thing on the other side. One more that was hiding from me right there in the middle of the car, literally dead center. Ta-da! I hope I don't need to throw this piece back on. I'd like to keep it off if I can. Dude, look at all the room we have back there. Like, I could literally fit my whole hand. You know? That's crazy. And then I'm gonna have to go in there and heat wrap all of this down here, all of these lines. Ooh, that's gonna be a headache. Just gonna do labor work for now, drop the subframe and anything else that I gotta do that'll be in my way. And yeah, I'm gonna put up a time lapse. So I'll see you on the, in the next clip. and we're back it is another day and i'm gonna try to take out the uh the down pipe and manifold today hopefully i can do this within an hour because i gotta leave in an hour back home but crawling under here i mean i got plenty of room to work with those two bolts uh heat shield and all so hopefully i could get this done so I got the manifold and the cat off. Dude, it was super easy. I probably did it in like 45 minutes. As you can see, there's nothing there. My only complaint about taking off this manifold is that there's a heat shield that's on top of it and along with the O2 sensor, and you cannot take off the, the exhaust manifold until you take off the small heat shield because um, the bolts that go here, I mean the nuts that go here are tucked underneath. Super easy nonetheless. I did it without um, any right angle electric tools. I did it all with ratchets and stuff and a few extensions, but it was really easy. So 
So the turbo I decided to go with is a Pulsar 3071 with a T51R mod. And this turbo is really like small. I, like it's big, but it's small, if that makes sense. So you could see kind of the, the size of this thing is really small. Oh, right there. It's a small turbo. Now, the reason why I went with the small turbo is because they spool a lot faster than big turbos. And I don't plan on making a much, uh, a lot of power with my Civic due to the trans, you know, third and fourth are the, always a weak, weak link, but yeah. Before we put the turbo on the manifold, we're gonna have to actually clock the turbo Basically, meaning we're gonna have to line these up right here, these ports. You're just gonna have to orientate the turbo in a, in a way that as long as the oil feed is straight up and the oil drain is straight down, then we're good. Um, so let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So basically the way you rotate this is you loosen these bolts on the hot side of the turbo. And if you wanted to rotate this part, you just loosen these bolts right here. So I already loosened these. You can see they're loose and I could rotate it. And so basically you want to line it up with the manifold so that the oil feed, which is this one, lines up. So if I were to put this up right now, it would sit like this. You can see the oil feed is on the side right now. So we want this up this way. You know what I mean? I rotated so that way it is facing up and you can see the oil drain i mean the oil feed right there and so if i were to bolt this on behind the engine right now the oil feed would be facing up i got all the fittings laid out uh oil drain oil feed so i'm going to put all of these on the new turbo and i'm going to wrap them in some plumbing tape and the way i know what port is what is i'm going based off of the uh, old turbo so this is obviously the the oil drain and this is the oil drain you know they go hand in hand and the side ports i still have to figure out which one is the coolant feed and the coolant drain so i gotta check that out myself but oil drain and then we go directly above it over here that one is the oil feed Okay, so I got all the fittings on. I forgot to put on these little washers right underneath it. So I took it off, rewrapped it, put the washer on, bolted it down. I just tried putting on the whole thing and I got to rotate this side a little bit forward. So this end has to be facing up here, like right next to the manifold. So that way when I go and put on the intercooler tube, Put it on together because this right now if i were to put it on it's facing the firewall so i just got to rotate it so you guys see this bracket right here i'm gonna unbolt that because all it's doing is supporting these clips up here right there and the one right above it so i'm gonna take these clips out and then this bracket is gonna come off because when i put on the turbo the wastegate is actually hitting right here so I'm just going to unbolt that. You don't need it. You could always just zip tie th this harness somewhere else. All right, I got the clips off. I'll take off the harness. And you can see right there, that's all that bracket is, is for. So oil pressure switch is off. Now we can go ahead and take this T and put it inside right there. The T is in there. I already have the 4AN line hooked up. Now we could put the pressure switch back in. Right there. There you go. Now the thread is tapered, meaning it goes smaller to wider and wider and wider. 
So when you're tightening down, you gotta be really careful because if you go too much, something could break or crack. So, and it's the same thing with this black fitting right here. It, it's tapered. So the more I push it in, the tighter it gets. So I just snugged it up, hand tight. Once I started feeling resistance, I just, you know, I kind of stopped. Unlike this and right here, the OEM pressure switch, it's not tapered, it's straight. It's a straight end, no taper. So this could go in all the way. So yeah, just be really careful when you're doing this. You don't want to crack anything or break anything. All right, pressure, the oil pressure switch is in. Same thing, I tightened it up till I started to feel resistance. And then you can go ahead and plug in this clip right here. Like slide it in, click, and just like that, this is done. I have heat wrapped everything. It looks like a hot mess of gold wrap. But I think I got everything important. Either way, I'm gonna buy a turbo blanket to put on there. Um, but yeah, everything's wrapped. Oh, well, I got the turbo mounted right now. Um, and I'm and I see that I need to make a little bit more room. So I see the turbo isn't lining up with this pipe right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just clock it again, rotate it back a little bit more. I finally got the oil pan loose. Dude, this thing was such a pain. Like it was on there, bro. I'm gonna get ready to drill the oil pan here's the oil drain and i'm gonna put it on the driver's side right here i know people like to put it over here but it's just it's too complicated man because it's gonna end up in between this i can't exactly put it up here because the oil filter sits up here so i'm just gonna go with this choice and k is also running his uh turbo drain on the driver's side and he's his car has been turboed for like two years, so. I got the oil pan on and I'm just test fitting how I'm gonna run this line. I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and make the A in line and then mount the turbo and hopefully that'll be the last time I have to mount the turbo. So this is how I ended up running my turbo oil drain. I've had no, no issues or anything. I've driven on the highway. It's not hanging, hanging lower than the subframe. But uh, yeah, just, just a closer look if you guys were interested. Check this out. My brother welded the V-band uh, piece to the downpipe. And this V-band piece actually came with the uh, turbo kit from Pulsar. And it's just crazy how this actually fit on the mock speed downpipe perfectly and then my brother just welded it all the way around so this is going to go to the turbo so now i have the air intake temperature sensor mounted in you can see it's mounted differently because it did not fit these holes so my brother drilled and tapped them for me and now the sensor is in there just fine but i do need to extend them just a little bit so they can reach the uh, MAF sensor or the maf sensor All right, I got the air in, or the intake air temperature sensor in the pipe extended and I just wired it into the MAF and I just plugged in the MAF for the MAF sensor. And I'm hoping, hoping that these wires are the correct ones. I looked on Han data, it's, it's these ones. I also seen another video, the guy just said the right two wires and in this case is very much the right two wires so i'm hoping that this is good got the sensor in and i'm just gonna tuck it somewhere and i'm gonna clean up this wiring this is a vacuum distributing block and i'm going to cut this vacuum that leads to the stock manifold and i'm gonna tee it off and it's gonna go in here and basically i'm gonna be able to run my blow off valve 
and my boost gauge and anything else that needs a vacuum source from here. And I'm just gonna leave it. I am still gonna find a place to mount it, but that's basically how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna tee off from the manifold and plug it into here. And now this will receive all vacuum. This is how I'm running my vacuum block. Basically exactly how I said, I tapped into the intake manifold, ran it inside the vacuum block, and now it's connected to my BOV and it works perfectly fine. Really easy setup. Teflon taped all of the ports I'm not using. But yeah. So the reason why you see me drilling and tapping, well, it wasn't me, it was my brother. He always does like the small technical stuff. I somehow seem to mess that up every time. So the reason why it's getting drilled and tapped is because the wastegate vacuum source needs to be pretty much on the turbo. You can hook up the wastegate to like a vacuum block or another vacuum source, but I hear it's not accurate. And I want the wastegate to be opening literally as, as soon as it's meant to be open because I don't want to overboost. I just don't want to risk it. So I just went ahead and took off the turbo housing or whatever the proper term for that housing is called. I just took it off, had it drilled and tapped. And just like that, you're done. Yeah.